Hi, it's Dwyer. It is May 9th, 2023. Let's talk heavyweight boxing. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, I'm disappointed. I was looking forward to that Zhili Zhang, Tyson Fury fight. Bob Arum issued a statement saying that Zhang was the front runner. You thought everything aligned because Frank Warren, who co-promotes Tyson Fury, is part of Zhang's management now, right? So you thought, okay, if they're thinking about Zhang, given that Frank Warren is also involved with Joe Joyce, the stars have aligned here. Right, I believe the stars have aligned even more than boxing fans realize because Zhili Zhang is a major threat to the heavyweight title. Right, I have my doubts if Tyson Fury would be able to beat him. Understand, as viewers know here, I consider... Philippe Ergovic to be the heir apparent. I know, I know, there are not a lot of people out there saying that. <laughs> but I consider him to be the heir apparent. I was pleasantly surprised by how competitive that Zhili Zhang Ergovic fight was. Folks, that fight hung into the balance well into that fight. Right? Zhang gave Ergovic all he could handle. Now, against Tyson Fury, I'm guessing Tyson Fury realizes that he wouldn't want to be close to the pocket. Against Zhang early, I think Fury would try to assert himself in the later rounds. I believe Zhang, who was a 6-1 to underdog against Joe Joyce, would be a big underdog against Tyson Fury. I don't think the public appreciates how good a boxer Zhang is and the fact that Fury, while he would have a foot speed advantage, would be at a disadvantage in the pocket because he would not be able to clinch. Zhili Zhang, like he clinched people like Derek Chisora in the past. So he would have to stay away, and there is a question. Let's be clear here. There is a question on whether Fury, in his mid-30s, still has the legs and the timing that he had against Vladimir Klitschko when he first won the title several years ago. Right? Understand. Power is the last to go. So Gili's still hitting hard, folks. Just like George Foreman, well into his 40s, was hitting hard. But timing and your legs are the first to go. Right? Age is a strange thing. Let me also say, too, against a skilled southpaw who could lead with power shots and who is two-handed, Right? Would Fury be able to go southpaw against Zhili Zhang and be effective? Right? One wonders. Also, Fury, no one wants to talk about it, but Fury's been down in a number of fights. Zhili Zhang hits hard. Right? Understand, he drops Ergovic with his off hand. Zhang's also a big man. He's around 6'6". Six, six. So he wouldn't be looking up at Fury that much. And he certainly wouldn't be bashful about being on his front foot against Tyson Fury. So I was looking forward to that fight. I don't care about heavyweight tournaments that are supposed to happen after big fights, right? Had Ali been scheduled to be in some heavyweight tournament after um, a scheduled fight against Joe Fraser, who would care about the tournament? 
the champ would have to get to the tournament first. The Zhang fight was big. Also, I don't know what's happening in boxing. Understand, if you were to look up the biggest casinos in the world, some of the casinos in Macau would show up on your radar. Right? Understand, a lot's happening in Asia right now. If you don't believe that China is the most populated country in the world, then you might believe India is. Right? A lot's happening in that part of the world. Here you have Zhang, who's a major threat to the throne and who came up in the Chinese amateur boxing system. This is a guy who represented China in more than one Olympic Games. This is a former silver medalist in the Olympic Games. Right, so we're all looking, we're all distracted by looking at Anthony Joshua, right, who couldn't stop Jermaine Franklin. Right, Anthony Joshua, who is retooling himself with the new trainer. Right, we're looking at Deontay Wilder, and I can see Joshua Wilder's a huge fight. Don't get me wrong, that's a huge fight. There's a lot unresolved there. Right, we're looking at the De Deontay Wilder. Understand, Wilder's last fight was against Robert Hellenius. It's not like either Joshua or Wilder is marching through the heavyweight division. Let me say this too. In his mid-30s, it's Alexander Usyk. Why the delay in putting him in the ring against Tyson Fury? Why is the Fury camp talking about fighting Zhili Zhang first? Isn't that the mistake Joe Joyce made? Right? Some genius in these camps are saying, hey, we need to fight a lefty before we fight Alexander Usyk. Right? Forget the fact that Usyk is a mover. Right? Usyk's a slick pretty boy fighter, quite frankly. And Zhang is trying to take you out in the early rounds. Forget the fact that they're two different guys. <laughs> right? Forget the fact that they're two different styles. Right? People somehow are saying, hey, I want to fight Zhang to prepare for Usyk. That should also tell you the lack of confidence in the heavyweight division. Right? Some guys would say, what's this cruiserweight doing in our division? Some guys would look at Usyk and would say, okay, Usyk beat a methodical, uncertain Anthony Joshua. After Joshua, of course, had already lost had already lost by stoppage to Andy Ruiz, right? Is that supposed to scare me? But no, in this big and clunky heavyweight division, folks, here's a secret. They know they're big and clunky. Why are we getting the public show of Tyson Fury saying, hey, I'll sign a fight Usyk if he agrees to fight me by the end of the month? Why are we getting that dog and pony show? It's because, here's the secret, they don't want to fight Usyk. Just food for thought. In fact, let's let the world in on another secret. There are a number of guys they don't want to fight. How come no one is rushing to fight Philippe Ergovic? You thought any heavyweight who looked at the film of his fight against Zhili Zhang would say, wow, this brother, isn't he a bit overhyped? This brother had to get up off the canvas in this fight. Did this brother really win this fight? You would have thought that a Tyson Fury would have said, hey, man, let me fight Ergovic while he's unbeaten because he won't be unbeaten after fighting me. It's like this guy's supposed to be the tornado blowing through the heavyweight division part of town. No, no, folks, guys are on borrowed time right now in the heavyweight division. Think about the people over 30. Isn't that you, Tyson Fury? 
Isn't that you, Anthony Joshua? Isn't that you, Deontay Wilder? Aren't these guys trying to monopolize the heavyweight division? Aren't these guys trying to extend their periods of relevance? So here we are in May. You're a boxing fan. You're thinking, man, I, I can't wait to see the fights this summer. And then they're telling you nonsense about some heavyweight tournament at the end of the year, and they're bashful about it. Right? They're not coming out and saying, here's the date, here's the location, here's who's fighting, here's what happens if this person wins in the first round and that person wins in the first round. This is what the second round would be. They're not even telling you that. So, folks, it's ridiculous. How would you characterize 2023 when... It's so hush-hush. It's so filled with BS. Right? Tyson Fury supposedly wanted to fight Anthony Joshua after Anthony Joshua looked bad in, in fights. Right? Then he gave him a time limit. Suddenly he was ready to fight Usyk. But then he gave Usyk a time limit. Then, of course, he, he didn't fight Usyk. Then we heard about a tantalizing fight, Zhili Zhang, that Fury was going to have. And you thought, oh, great, in the summer. All right. I want to see that. Now, of course, Joe Joyce, who has no shot, in my opinion, of beating Zhili Zhang, right? Because Joe Joyce, let's be real here, is hardwired. Right? Joe Joyce thinks it's creative to make adjustments before the start of the fight. Not mid-fight. He's not that guy. Is there anyone watching this video who thinks that Joe Joyce is going to come out against Zhili Zhang and be on his back foot, moving laterally? You think that's going to be the fight? No, 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 folks. First off, it wouldn't work because Zhili Zhang's a hunter. Right? If Zhili Zhang shows up and Joe Joyce is on his back foot trying to, you know, look slick and stuff like that, Zhang's going to say, great, I'll, I'll be on my front foot. You know, you want to box me? Okay, I'll be the person trying to hunt you down. I'll be your huckleberry. Right? No, you know, Joe Joyce, his game is to be a bully, isn't it? He's in the ring. He's on his front foot. He's trying to look invincible. He's trying to hunt you down. You know what happens when you hit a bully in the mouth? That bully falls apart. Right? So, big bad Mike Tyson in an earlier generation was looking all tough. He was in a press conference. He was talking about how he was going to smash up Evander Holyfield. Then it was Holofield's time to talk. The problem with Evander is Evander was real. He had been in wars with fighters like Riddick Bowe. Right? Evander was tough. He was in wars before we got to the heavyweight division. Right? So Evander sat there, listened to bully Mike Tyson, and when the mic came to him, Evander just said, hey, well, we're going to fight anyway. He said, looking at Mike Tyson, right? Basically saying, hey, whatever said here, who cares about that? You know, we're going to fight anyway. Tyson lost his confidence, in my opinion, at that press conference. Then you got to the fight. Tyson got beaten up. This is the first fight. This is not the ear-biting fight. By the time you got to the second fight, Tyson understood Holofield viewed him as a man not some bully type guy who was going to intimidate him. So Tyson had to start biting Holyfield's ear. Did it twice, by the way, not once, twice. Mills Lane, the ref, was patient. Now let's hope Joe Joyce, when he realizes that Zhili Zhang isn't buying the bully act. I'm sure Zhili Zhang, <laughs> Zhili Zhang does not care, quite frankly, if Joe Joyce is front foot heavy. Because... He's already seen that, been there, done that. Oh, this is the next round of our first fight? Well, I liked our first fight. 
You're going to be on your front foot this extra round. Okay, I'm I'm good with that. Right, folks need to understand, too, they didn't see all of Xili Zhang. He didn't even have to show you a lot of right hands in that fight because his left hand was landing like a metronome. Right, and so Joe Joyce is going to lose to Zhang. The problem is it clouds whatever nonsense tournament they're telling us about that's going to happen later in the year. You know, too, that tournament is going to lack credibility, quite frankly, if they have the tournament and you don't hear Usyk's name as a participant. Right? You can't announce a heavyweight tournament and then exclude guys with heavyweight titles who actually want to participate in the tournament. Right? And so, you know, I'll just say this, too. Let's say Fury's in the tournament. Look, I believe the defining series of fights for this era in the heavyweight division has been Fury against Wilder. But, folks, they've already fought each other three times. Right? Lord knows this heavyweight division has a bunch of other guys in it. Right? How, how are they going to structure this to get you to look away from Martin Bacoli, Jared Anderson, Andy Ruiz, who still, as I make this video, at least in my opinion, has the fastest hands in the heavyweight division. Right, so let's see what happens. I'm expecting Zhili Zhang to take care of Joe Joyce again. What I'm hoping for, what I'm hoping for is for Frank Warren to get everyone in a room and for Joe Joyce to accept step-aside money and understand here it actually would work out well for him. Because if Zhili Zhang were to beat Tyson Fury, Joe Joyce has a rematch clause. You can work out the deal so Joe Joyce is the next in line to fight Zhili Zhang. Only this time it would be for the heavyweight title. Right, so a lot's happening at heavyweight, just not the right things. Let me also make another point, too. And I know it's going to sound ridiculous. And I agree. The guys who are in their 20s are on the younger side of being in their 20s. Right? But I need for people to realize that Ali wins the heavyweight title at 22 years old. Look it up. Mike Tyson, younger than that. Right? Now, while I say Heavyweights age more slowly than everyone else. Even I'm surprised at how thoroughly the current heavyweight division has been able to exclude heavyweights in their 20s. Right? You look through history. All of these guys. George Foreman wins the heavyweight belt in his 20s. Right? We somehow have said, hey, we're going to have tournaments, and if you're under 30, you're not invited. Let me just say, too, that even the guys I'm talking about here was threats to the throne. Zhili Zhang, folks, he's late 30s, early 40s. Right? I believe he wins his silver in the 2008 Olympics. Philip Bergovic, I believe he's now in his 30s. Right, so let's loosen this thing up. Let's actually include more heavyweights in what's happening. Let's include more heavyweights in the mix here. Right, I also personally, because I'm hoping to win a bet, I personally want to see Zhili Zhang in the ring against Tyson Fury. Fury is infuriating. 
How could you have his talent and somehow, how could you fight Vladimir Klitschko? Deontay Wilder. Let's remember, he wanted to fight Anthony Joshua when Anthony Joshua was on top. Right? He had problems, of course, with the British Boxing Board. Right? They're onerous. They're onerous. Um, UK, if you want to know your biggest enemy, it's your regulatory body. Right? That's tough on fighters. Well, Fury was dealing with the regulatory body, right? Fury himself was having mental health problems, right? So I imagine getting insurance for his fights was a challenge. I'm sure there are a lot of excuses that could be made, but at one point, Fury was compelling. He was the lineal. He wanted to fight Joshua. He travels to the United States to fight Deontay Wilder. Now you're telling me that guy, that guy, can't sign the dotted line and give us a date certain to fight an Olympic gold medalist who was undisputed at cruiser and who now has multiple belts at heavyweight? Come on. I mean, what's going on? Guys are dangling their legacies over the ledge of the window. Right? Who here was screaming for another Fury match against Derek Chisora? But yet, that's what we got, wasn't it? Right? So, to sum up here, I expect Joe Joyce to lose to Zhili Zhang. I'm hoping Joyce accepts step-aside money because... I personally believe a Zhang Fury fight is major. I view that as major. In fact, I view it as more major, just personally, because Zhili is a Southpaw. Because Zhili Zhang has unfinished business with Ergovic and isn't afraid to hop in the ring with him. Right, I view the Zhang Fury fight as being a fight as big as Fury Anthony Joshua. Right, I view a Zhang Fury fight as being more desirable than a fourth fight. Not even Fraser Ali fought four times, as a fourth fight between Wilder and Fury. Right? We want to know who the heavyweight champ is right now. I'm not interested in being too nostalgic. Right? I definitely want to see Wilder Joshua. Don't get me wrong. But I also want to know who the heavyweight champ is right now. And I'm profoundly disappointed that Usyk wants to fight Fury. That fight hasn't been signed. What's that about? Then you have Zhang, and he's all set to fight Tyson Fury, who's looking to fight anybody but who's sick, apparently. And now Joe Joyce is hopping out the weeds. No one has told Joe that he was on his way to getting knocked out by Zhili Zhang. Right? No one has told Joe that Zhang already knocked down a better fighter than him, quite frankly, in Philippe Bergevic. Right? So let's hope that Joe somehow magically accepts step-aside money. Let's hope that we get a classic. We get a classic involving Fury and Zhang. Let's hope that the Western Hemisphere-centric world of boxing suddenly understands that there is a Eastern Hemisphere, that Asian fighters... Chinese fighters. In fact, we already have fighters out of Japan, vibrant boxing community. Just understand, there are major fighters coming out of China, right? Zhang is a figure who could open up a whole new part of the boxing universe here, right? As I've said, 
There are very few things in the entire sports world as valuable as the heavyweight championship in boxing. Right? I would argue world's fastest man is on par, but even that's subject to debate. Could you imagine if Zhang throws down a great fight against Tyson Fury? Right? Understand, Zhang is going to flush Fury out the pocket. Understand, Zhang can lead with either hand. Fury is going to be forced, literally forced, to show us whether he still has the legs, the timing, the back foot. Right? Let's hope that fight happens. Let's hope Joe Joyce realizes that he's not beating Zhili Zhang anytime soon. Certainly not if he fights Zhang this summer. Right? Hey, I'd love to be the mandatory at heavyweight. Right? I can't be Zhili Zhang. Someone needs to tell Joe, hey, there are easier ways to get back your mandatory status. Let me say this too. It's riveting that at a time when Fury's not fighting Usyk, right? How much time is going to pass before that fight happens? That war in the Ukraine might actually end before Fury fights Usyk. It's interesting that Usyk's so good that guys who want to position themselves for shots at the title are calling him out. Right? Other fighters should be embarrassing Fury by calling out Usyk. Trust me, if this were the 70s, you would have guys saying, hey, if Tyson Fury is not going to fight Alexander Usyk, I want to fight Usyk. Right? Fighters would be holding press conferences or showing up at other people's press conferences to call out heavyweight champs to say, hey, I want my shot at the belt. I'm ready now. Let me say this too, folks, believe it or not, we've had Olympic Games since Anthony Joshua won the Olympic gold in 2012. Right now, Tony Yoka has crashed and burned. Right? But understand, there's another Olympic champion out there. When are young guys going to start yelling? No, I'm not saying any of them are ready right now. But understand, that doesn't stop the hunger. When are young guys going to start criticizing the boxing establishment for freezing out the 20-somethings in the heavyweight division? Right? I'm hoping some young guys are going to start saying, hey, look, man, you know, all of these guys belong in a retirement home. You know, I'm here now and I'm ready. Right? I'm not saying any are. But I couldn't imagine Ali back in the day being passed over and the 30-something guys aren't even fighting each other. Right? Wilder Joyce, how many years is it going to take for them to get in the ring together? Right? Fury Usyk, come on now. Right? The heavyweight belt is being held hostage. I'm not saying Tyson Fury isn't a great fighter. Right? He's one of the best I've seen at heavyweight. But let's just say you look at Ali, and folks need to understand, he fights Fraser three times. I believe he fights Ken Norton three times. Right, He hops in the ring with George Foreman. When he's washed up, he hops in the ring with Larry Holmes. Right, He fights Liston twice. Right, uh, You know, guys actually used to fight each other. I don't know what's happening right now in the heavyweight division where Usyk can't get a match with Fury, right? Where we're still waiting for Joshua Wilder, right? Where 20-somethings are just frozen out of the conversation entirely. You tell me your thoughts on the state of the heavyweight division in the comment section of this YouTube video. If you have one takeaway from this video, make it that I think... Zhili Zhang beats Joe Joyce again. I think Zhili Zhang today gives Tyson Fury one of the best fights Fury has ever had. 
certainly a better fight than Vladimir Klitschko gave him. That's how I see it. In that fight, I would take Zhang Zhili, who's clearly the betting side of the play, by the way, clearly, to win the fight because you're going to get great odds. He got 6-1 to one when he fought Joe Joyce. And I would hedge that with the over because I believe Tyson Fury would understand he doesn't want to be in the area code of the pocket the first few rounds against Zhili Zhang. That's my take. I hope you leave yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.